Hell, daddy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Today's uh, Diecast review is going to be on a very unique and a very forgotten paint scheme from way back in 2014. Everybody forgets that Stenhouse was actually sponsored by Nationwide for a brief moment in the Cup Series. And what an awesome looking race car here, guys. A 2014 Nationwide Ford Fusion for uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in his second um, Cup Series campaign. Uh, this was built on the L mode, so this is going to be a good review for you guys. Was not built on the PTC slash WLS from 2014. Even though the box design is a little bit stale, the paint scheme is very bright. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. Alrighty, folks, brand new out of the good old box. And first thing that got ju that just pops at me is the beautiful shade of blue on this diecast, guys. I mean, it's like a perfect sky blue, uh, pretty much like the Claritin blue you would see like on their commercials or whatnot. But uh, what a fabulous looking car. Like this is, to me, this is truly a forgotten paint scheme, especially when I've seen Dale Jr.'s 2015 car. I love Dale Jr., but this paint scheme looks so much better than that. So anyways, let's go to the nose of this car right here. I picked up this car over there at Circle B Diecast. So if you want to get one as well, uh, make sure you use the promo code down below. Diecast Buffet, all one word, at Circle B Diecast. Any orders, $20 or more, guys, you'll get free shipping. Uh, link down below to that. So you got the Stenhouse Jr. Uh, front windshield banner right there. It actually looks really good. I like that. I like the, the A, B, and C, or A pillars here, are all painted black or decal black. So it just, I don't know, it just looks really sharp there. You got the nationwide uh, letter with the bird just chilling there. It reminds me of like an old... Uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, logo. I uh, got the Ford logo right there, Fusion. Uh, who remembers when the Ford Fusions used to have a plastic grill insert on the nose of their car? So if every time they got into fender bender, this little piece would pop out. Honestly, I love that. I thought it was a really cool thing they did. They got the number 17 right there. We got Moog Mail Cop out of Rock Sunoco. Splitter is painted black, but uh, does have a few chips uh, from the factory, unfortunately. You know, 2014 was a hit or miss year for, um, I, I think, for diecast because they made some phenomenal paint schemes. They made Alex Bowen's rookie car. They made Brian Vickers, you know, 55 car. They also made the Dogecoin car, arguably the most expensive 164 diecast ever produced from the NASCAR um, series, excluding prototypes, right? That diecast is ridiculously expensive, hundreds of dollars, right? Well, in that year, some of the cards got produced on the L mode, which is considered the good mode. And then you have the WLS and the PTC. Those two are crap. Uh, the biggest difference is easily the tires. These are very slender, very aerodynamic. Uh, if it was a PTC mode car, the wheels would look gigantic. So, uh, to the left side of this diecast, we look at we got the Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Um, signature. And I gotta say, that's the longest signature I've ever seen. Looks really cool, though. Uh, I got uh, Fifth Third Bank right there. Uh, I got the goofy logo there, Fifth Third. Got Nationwide Insurance, American Ethanol. Uh, I got, so let's get a little closer look here, guys. Finally, some contingencies on a freaking diecast. Gotta love that, right? We got Mac Tool, Sherwin Williams, Champion. Got the number 17. I still think to this day that um, Roush should bring back the Mac Kenza font because, truth be told, Ever since they went away from the Matt Kenza font, Roush has done crap. I'm just saying. Got the uh, Roush, uh, not Roush, but the net race car logo there. Got Cup Series, uh, Auto Meter, Jenks, Edelbrock, uh, Freescale, Mechanics Wear, Holly e 3M, and K&N. Got a Goodyear decal there. I love this paint scheme, guys. It's a very, very nice sky blue with kind of a um, a, a two-tone, I'd say a panel or maybe a wing. You know, the black with kind of a, a, a um, what do we call this, a used car gray. That's what it reminds me of. Now, this right here, I don't like. The back end of the car here. I, I, I think this looks pretty tacky. Um, I love the blue. Love the blue. But wh what is this doing here? It's like, I don't know. It just looks really tacky to me. Who remembers these gigantic bubble taillights? Uh, the Ford Fusions used to have, man. Reminds me of NASCAR uh, 2014, you know, NASCAR 15. That's what it reminds me of. Get nationwide.com on your side. Get the Ford decal there. Uh, you got your, I, I'm guessing those are exhaust ports there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, got the uh, Roush Fenway Racing logo with an interesting background to it. Number 17, black spoiler. Let's go to the right side of this diecast, fellas. How y'all doing out there? Make sure to comment down below, fellas. 
I, I love this diecast. I really do. And the cool thing is they overproduced this car. So it's really cheap to get. And that's where I got it. I got it last year during the uh, Black Friday sale over there at Circle B Diecast. So I'm pretty sure they still had this car in stock. Uh, but really one of the most b beautiful nationwide paint schemes I've ever seen. If not, maybe the best because... In my honest opinion, the 2015 Dale Jr. car, I never liked it. I'm just going to be honest with you. The 2016 one was so much better, in my opinion. But this one was just like a one-and-done type of paint scheme. It's just such a good-looking car uh, to me. I love it. So you got the number 17 right there on the roof. Still wish this was the Matt Kenseth font. I, I just think that, that kind of cursed Roush when they, when they dropped the 99. They dropped Matt Kenseth's font. Uh, then they, of course, left the 16 car go. The only thing that's really still there is the number six, and they've had a thousand different drivers in it. Uh, got the nationwide insurance decal there. This, this decal's uh, pretty crooked there, is unfortunately. Uh, but again, the whole paint scheme design is really, really simple. Just a simple uh, sky blue paint job with a kind of a wing, kind of a curvature. It does have a sharp transition here, right? You can see the sharp transition. There's no outlining, no border effect. But you do have a very wide stripe that goes from the bo uh, bottom side skirt through the number all the way up to the B post. And it even goes across where the uh, signature would be. Now, the signature, in my opinion... I, I think they should have done some sort of outlining to it or some other color because it really the middle of it you can't even read because it's like a, a borderline white stripe, right? It's it's like a very light gray uh, with white writing. Just, it, it, it just doesn't work, right? That'd probably be my only pet peeve with this die cast, but uh, luckily this car got overproduced. So that means it's very cheap for everyone who wants to pick up this car from 2014. Uh, but it, it's a fabulous looking die cast, guys. And look at the box design here. I, I, I look back at 2014, and I gotta be honest with you, 2014 is probably the worst box designs um, ever. It's one of, I mean, look at this. They didn't even put the Roush Fenway green. You have the b very bland Ricky Stoush Jr. wording there. I mean, like, the wording for that is just very bland to me. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at this diecast over here. I love that font they use of the Kyle Larson on it. I know that's a custom car uh, made by LW3, but I love the Kyle Larson font, right? This font, to me, ever since uh, they released these, I never was a fan of it. To me, the whole box, to me, is just very plain. But you look at the die cast here, and beautiful. I love the look of this car, man. Really, really sharp look of die cast. And it doesn't matter if you're a Stenhouse fan or Roush fan. This is just one of those paint schemes I think people would love to have in their collection. It just really looks well. Um, like I said, it's overproduced, so it's very affordable. I don't really care for the back end of the car, though. I do think that's a little goofy there. It's a little goofy, but, you know, it is what it is, fellas. What do y'all think about this 2014 Ricky Stenhouse Jr., or Ricky Spinhouse Jr., if you will, uh, Ford Fusion? Uh, crazy to think, guys, that the Gen 6 era is over. Um, that's it. 2021 is the final year for it, unless they bring it, off, uh, bring it back for a one-off or whatever uh, for 2022. But nonetheless, so... Uh, the Gen 6 era was definitely a fun era of NASCAR racing. Uh, it had its high, high points. You know, 2014 was the best year for it. High horsepower, low downforce is certainly the way to go. Um, but uh, Gen 7, oh boy, uh, who knows how that one's going to go. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. And for more NASCAR diecast videos, uh, make sure to stay tuned and hit that notification bell. Got plenty of really cool custom diecasts coming up here on the channel. Uh, got some custom COTs here. Very, very cool stuff. Heck, it maybe even have some non-custom COTs. This one's a little bit dusty, you know? Uh, but that's a beautiful 2010 Tony Stewart diecast, guys. So lots of cool stuff coming up here on the channel. Have a great one, everybody, and if you want to pick up this car, make sure to check out the promo code down below, Diecast Buffet, signing off.